All right, let's do a problem solving example uh, of a linear equation. Okay, let's read it together. Two students, Peter and Mary, decide to raise money by selling secondhand chemistry and physics books to other students. They sold a total of 27 books for $100. If the chemistry books were sold for $3 each and the physics books were sold for $4 each, how many of each book did they sell? Okay, this is a typical question. Um, it's a good question to begin with um, because we can look at the best method for doing it. Now a lot of students don't know how to begin with a question like this and if you're at all in doubt about where to begin or in fact I suggest you always do, it this, any, do this anyway is you start by making a definition. Okay, so let's, let's, let's just define the problem itself. Okay, this is a step that not many people like to do and that's, re that's the reason why a lot of people have troubles with these sorts of questions. Okay, when we're defining, you know, almost always with these sorts of questions, we're going to start with the sentence, let x be something. Now what is it that we should let x be in this question? Okay, well we've got two unknowns here, don't we? We've got the number of chemistry and the number of physics books, okay? And that's what the question is asking. How many of each books? So we could let X be either of these. <clears throat> so I say, why don't we just keep it in order? Let X be the number of chemistry books. Okay, so now we're now we've begun. X is the number of chemistry books and straight away we can say the number of physics books is what? Well, if there are 27 books in total there are 27 books in total and we have X chemistry books then we must have 27 minus x physics books. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. Now, the next thing to do is to let's construct the equation that we're after. I think I've spelt construct correctly there. Okay, <clears throat> we're trying to construct an equation here. Now what's this, what's the overall thing that this equation is, a, that this yeah, equation, this problem is about? Well, we're talking in terms of money, aren't we? There's a hundred dollars. So we're talking about incomes. So why don't we try and set up an equation that has to do with incomes? And I think the and to do this we need to make a statement of logic. So let's make a statement of logic that goes like this. If we say that the income from the chemistry books plus oops, let me write that plus properly plus the income from the physics books must equal to the total income. Okay, I want that to make sense to you. The income from the chemistry books plus the income from the physics books must be equal to the total income. Okay, let's now start to put those things together. What is the income from the chemistry books? Well, each chemistry book was sold for $3 each, and there are X of them, so the income from the chemistry books will be 3X. 
okay the income from the physics books um, how much are each was each physics book sold for they were each sold for four dollars so it'll be a four here now how much how many of the physics books were sold well 27 minus X so 4 times 27 minus X and of course the total income was just a hundred dollars we saw that before okay and lo and behold we've got an equation now okay so let's uh, well let's give ourselves a new page so that we can uh, keep going with this question. So, so far what we had was 3x plus 427 minus x is equal to 100. Okay, so that's, we've now set up the equation. Okay, now that we've set up the equation, the third thing what we need to do is to solve the equation. Now for most people this is actually the easiest part. Okay, What do we do? Well let's firstly let's expand out those brackets so 3x plus now 4 times 27 4 times 20 is 80 4 times 7 is 28 80 plus 28 is 108 or you can use a calculator if you really need to. 4 times minus x is minus 4x and that's equal to 100. Okay. Now let's collect the like terms on this side. 3x and 4x are the like term. 3x minus 4x is minus x. Let's subtract 108 from both sides. So we get minus x equals minus 8. In other words, x equals 8. Okay, so um, physics books, oh no I don't mean physics books, I mean chemistry books there are uh, eight of them. How many physics books are there? Well, if you remember from the previous page, the number of physics books was 27 minus x, which will be 27 minus 8, which will be 19. Okay, so have we finished? Well, it looks like it, but not quite. We always need to finish in the final step by writing your answer nice and simply and separately. Okay? So the answer is they sold um, eight chemistry books and nineteen physics books. Okay? And that's it. And let me just reiterate by saying it's really important um, to do the steps that we've talked about here. Okay, so we just jump back for a second. It's really important to first of all define your variable. That often helps you get started in the question. Then it's important to construct the equation. So you have to think about what are the types of um, you know what is this what is this problem about what is the what is it that's being equated in this problem in this case what was being equated was income so that's what we base the equation around that's actually one of the hardest bits and then um, of course you need to solve which is often just easy you're just doing algebra and answer you mustn't forget to do this answer bit okay